compared to the other places you've been, is that normal for spring or is it an inordinately high number? It seems normal to me. Okay. I think typically that during the season, there's a, a handful of guys that could get surgery, but kind of look to tough out the rest of the season and if possible play through some injury that could be surgically repaired. And so, and then generally have surgery right after the season. Ends. And on the case of like a, um, guys with, with two shoulders, like Kai Nakua, you can't get both shoulders operated at the same time, then you wouldn't be able to do anything, you know, eat and wash yourself and stuff like that. So it's one shoulder and then that heals and then the other one. Coach, what's the biggest progress that you've seen from week one till now? I think um, fundamental footwork, especially. I'm, I'm focused most on safeties and, and then kind of the secondary and then from a special team standpoint, the whole roster. And I think early on it was just the challenge for guys to have new systems, new schemes, new coaches, new buzzwords, and how that translated into the, their footwork. But our footwork's getting better and better every day. And it's about where, about where I would hope it would be at this point. The special teams got a new kicker. Different things. What do you see in special teams wise, and how do you feel like that's moving along? I think it's getting better. Um, uh, uh, I've held us back in terms of the kicking depth chart because I've just kind of given every guy equal reps to this point, and I'm starting to get a better feel for who some of the guys at the top of the depth chart are and, and who should be getting more reps. So I think moving forward uh, toward the end of this week and into Saturdays or actually Friday, if we're going to have more of a scrimmage type environment, I think we'll be able to get mostly our one first guys out there at the snap, hold, and kick spot. Do you expect to go mostly live on special teams on the uh, scrimmage this weekend? Or? No, I don't think that we'll go live much at all during the entire spring camp, offense, defense, or, or special teams. We're, we've really worked hard on convincing the guys that if defensively, if we get our feet and hips and hands and eyes in the right place, that we're going to be great tacklers in a live situation. And so. That's a big change from, you know, even in, in the past for me until about two years ago, everything was what we call thud tempo. And that was a pretty common term that was used throughout the country. Wrap up and hold them up was a way to practice safely against guys. And uh, we're, we're totally taking the wrap up, hold up out of our lexicon and going straight to two hands on the hips, eyes, hips and feet in the right place. And what I've seen in, you know, in, in the last couple of years that I've been doing that is much better tackling effort guys have stopped grabbing and sometimes in practice we're trying to hold each other up to get in the habit of grabbing and the worst tackling efforts are always some kind of stop your feet reach over to the side and grab and so hopefully we're, we're taking that out of our technique you mentioned eye control in that sense what is it just where their eyes are looking in is in terms of tackling right yeah so we want to lower the vision on the, on the center of gravity of the players and that's generally uh, we, we're talking a lot about leverage tackling as opposed to being um, right to left or left to right by scheme, but the leverage that you have, maintaining that leverage so guys around you can continue to run through to the ball. So if the leverage is uh, on, on the outside of the player, then we want to be looking at the outside base of the numeral to the hip. That's the spot where we want that vision of the eye control. You, you touched on this also, just eye control regarding the secondary, just how are they doing in that sense? Because that's obviously big for, yeah. for whatever they're going to you know, be asked to do. Yeah, simplest way to characterize it would be zone eyes versus man eyes. And there's been a lot of zone concepts through here. And in fact, the guys, the players here, uh, they're familiar with a lot of zone concepts. And they're really, they're really trained up and they're smart in that way. And when we, when we have put in some of our zone systems, they're really on point with their questions and all the offensive beaters and the challenges to those zones. And, and so zone eyes are what they're really well trained on. And then we've got to get them to the point where, where when we're in man to man, they're riveted, they're locked in. It's, it's, you know, as far as they're concerned, if they're man to man, then it's a 10 on 10 football game and they're completely one on one out of the game. Okay. Thanks, Ed. All right.